Alright guys, just going to do a uh, quick video on a 2.7 litre TDV6 Discovery 3 alternator replacement. Uh, part number DXA588. So the uh, first two steps are pretty simple. Just need a 516 ratchet uh, socket on your ratchet. Got two screws. Two off, and then you need a 932 for the air box. We just want to get that completely out of the way. Off. You just want to pop your overflow tube out of the way. And this should just come free. You've got a couple of clips on either side. Can be a bit fiddly, but just gonna push the tabs in. Now you're at your fan. So to get the fan off first things first, you just gotta undo this plug here. And then um, I can definitely say that buy the tool to get this fan off because it was not fun at all um, so yeah just to show you guys that loosens the fan off Sorry, it's kind of awkward holding the camera at the same time but once you crack it off you should be able to just spin the fan to loosen the thread off so, um, yeah, definitely recommend buying the tool I spent about 10 minutes off camera trying to crack this off. That was a absolute nightmare. Alrighty, so once the fan's off, you just want to uh, loosen off your belt, which is just a 3.8 drive ratchet in this square drive here. And you just pull on it kind of clockwise. And you drop the camera. That's the third time now. Woo! So. Ignore that, that's me being clumsy, but yeah. So to get to the two bolts on the side of the alternator, I like to just remove this cover here. Um, some people still do it from up top, but I struggle a bit with uh, fitting in there. So it's just two plastic clips, or in my case, two plastic clips and a bolt. Um, but most of you will have two retaining screws on the bottom as well. Once again, that's a 516 head bolt. And then these clips can be a bit brittle sometimes, so I've got spares. Um, otherwise, generally just two screwdrivers on either side. And then I use long nose pliers just to pull them out once they've got enough room. <laughs> Once you got that out, you should be able to just pull the cover off. Just like so. And then, you can see from here, the two, two bolts for the alternator. Nice and easy to get to. Alright, so, obviously I've pulled those two bolts out at the bottom. Uh, two 13mm bolts, and now I've just come back up top again. So that's your positive lead right there, which you can get to quite easily. Um, which, once again, is another 13mm nut. And looking at the, the regulator cabling, I reckon I can just pull this alternator out um, first. So I've got enough slack there, and I'll just unplug it once it's out further because it's quite hard to get to. Plug it back. 
which shouldn't be too hard. See. Right. There we go there, we can see the plug now. I'll just try and rotate it for you. <coughs> There you go. Not laid us off. It's time to put the new one on. So cheap a bit. Probably a good idea for me to remove this nut first. For the positive cable. Where's that plug? All these full-time people make it look easy with this camera angle stuff, but it's actually quite hard. So I apologise for all the shitty camera work. <laughs> Alright. So, I'm a big fan of using anti-seize on my bolts. Um, don't have to, but I'm a fan of being able to get stuff undone in six months time, so. Enjoy. Hope you enjoyed my double chin there. Alright, I'm in. Oh. Made that look hard, didn't I? Just going to nip this bolt up a bit and then put the positive cable on and I'll um, come back to it after I've done the two bottom ones. So the battery positive's on now, and just underneath, um, and he sees the bolts again. Definitely recommend doing that every time. I'm just so many dramas of bolts getting stuck. So once again, I've, yeah, a lot of people like to just do all this with the top, but as you can see, for an extra couple of minutes and pull off one plastic and got so much room to work I always seem to get my of a spanner but you don't need to see that so. uh, I thought you guys might be interested in seeing the belt replacement um, so yeah just gonna bust it off now hopefully I remember how it goes There's another tool into the dash plate. That's like seventh time now. Alright, so we've got the culprit sussed. I'm sure you guys love seeing my double gin. Let's get that off. So I should have. Oh man, hello. Just 
goes around this like so and then around the power steering So normally when I do these belts, I'll always pull my bearings, but I've changed all my pulleys and um, idlers and the tension is new um, about six months ago, so I know they're all sweet and I think I've just nailed it. Oh, this belt's tight. Oh no. Ooh, that looks better. And, uh, yeah, there you have it. New drive belt, new alternator. Simple little job. Uh, just highly recommend buying the tool for the fan hub and make sure you remove your battery terminal. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. All right, so alternator and everything's back in. So, quick test. Check me voltage on the scan gauge. So this is the I, iCar Soft uh, LVR2 Diagnostics and, uh, It's not a bad scan gauge, you can do uh, tranny codes, steering recalibration all the, all the good stuff, it's a little bit more than just a scan gauge for, um, for Land Rover for everything else though, it's just a normal cheap OBD2 um, scan tool, so pretty much just engine codes. But uh, it can do ABS and everything on, on Land Rovers as well, so... There we go. Thirteen point eight volts.